No, it's so great to have the chance to talk to you today. First off, uh, it, it, you know, look, we've all been through, we're all going through this pandemic and everything together, but boy, have you had a, like a, a roller coaster ride because you, you're, you had a new album come out. It was the finale of Shit's Creek. You now have a movie at TIFF and you got married. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, it's been a, a, a weirdly busy year for a, for a year that everybody had to just shut everything down. I was like, okay, well, maybe I can keep some things going here. Well, exactly. You have to kind of make the best of it. So I want to start first before we talk about Tiff and everything and, your, and your, the short, which is fantastic, by the way. Um, you released your album in May, at the end of May. Yeah. How difficult was that for you? Uh, the album's called Gemini, for people who aren't familiar. And... I can't even imagine because you are a guy who used to, who's used to being on the road, you're touring, and then everything just comes to a standstill. So how do you get a new album out there and make sure people know about it? It was um, it was a unique challenge and one that I, I hadn't really encountered before. I, I'm not sure many people had. Um, but I, I don't know. I just sort of felt, you know, we had we had that day slated from a year prior. We were like, okay, well, let's release it in the spring. It'll be a nice sort of uh, uh, changing of the season. It was on, I released it on my birthday. Yeah. And um, I don't know when, when things sort of shut down, uh, I was on the road, I was on tour and had to come home early and, and cancel the rest of the tour. And I uh, just felt like at that, at the point where we were having to make decisions in sort of late March, um, early April about it, I just kind of was like, I don't know. I feel like if I postpone this, postpone it till when I don't know and and I, I felt like I was like I need to selfishly I need to put this out so that I have room to make other things and you know maybe there's something in this record for somebody else and and I, I noticed that a lot of records were being put on hold at the time and I was like ah, it just feels like there has to be something that continues here so um so you know we just sort of decided to go ahead anyway and and I think that definitely meant that you know, we couldn't publicize it as much as we would have liked to. Uh, we certainly couldn't go on late night TV shows and, and play, you know, Jimmy Fallon and stuff. I don't know if that was on the table, but it would have been fun. Anyway, it was just sort we'll of Put like, it out there, Jimmy. Yeah, have exactly. Noah Reed on. He's got to have you on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. It just sort of felt like uh, uh, the the time was right to put the record out. And, and so, you know, if, if people wanted to find it, they would find it. And, yeah. and thankfully, a, a, a bunch of people did. And, uh, you know, it feels good to be now working on new songs, trying to come up with a new record and all of that. Good for you, because, I, you know, I want to ask you, I've been knowing you for so many years and talking to you for so many projects since you were much younger. <laughs> and I mean, even though we're almost the same age. Yeah, right. But I, yeah, I yeah. have to say, I, you know, you've done such a great job at balancing both the acting and getting your music in there. But how, how challenging really from behind the scenes, like tell us a little bit about that because it's gotta be um, also a, a conflict for you too. Like, what should I do now? Should I act? Should I do my music? You know, what, what is that like for you, Noah? I think the, the, um, the beautiful thing about it is that, you know, the acting business sort of keeps you guessing as to what you're gonna be doing next in any given moment. You're not sure what project's gonna come along, if you're gonna have to pack up and go somewhere um the music i think i started writing songs and 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 when i started to record songs i was like oh okay well this is something i can plan this is something that i can do creatively that doesn't rely on anybody else it's not and it's also like you know acting is mostly a um there's there's creativity in it for sure but you're you're interpreting somebody else's creation and you're putting your your spin on it it's like playing a, a good cover, you know, you want to infuse it with something that you're bringing to the table, but it's not your song. And so with the, with my music side of things, it's been really nice to have some creative control, make decisions, um, you know, work, come up with artwork and videos and, and all of that stuff. I mean, it's a, it's a, from, from the brain of an actor who's used to just showing up and, and, you know, memorizing my lines, it's definitely a lot more involved. So, yeah. um, so it's actually kind of nice to switch gears, you know, periodically and, and find the times when I'm not working on an acting project to say, okay, this is a time I can focus on the music and, and, uh, you know, put something out into the world that's from my own perspective. And then it's also nice to get away from that and just yeah. sort of step into somebody else's shoes for a minute. So 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about this um, short film that you're in a, during tip. I, I loved it. I thought it was just, first of all, it just looked beautiful. That, like the, it was shot on 16 mil. It, it just is stunning. And I wanted to know how it all kind of came about because, you know, people think, ah, you do a short film, it's not as much work, but it is. And this one's kind of very intricate too, because, well, you know what, set it up for us. Tell us, tell us what it's, what it's about. Sure. So it's, um, it's called The Archivist. It's about a, a group of three friends, musicians, um, in a, a sort of a dystopian time when um, art and cultural artifacts are, are illegal and you can't keep things. Nobody can read, um, uh, except for my character, uh, Will, who uh, he's, he's the only guy who sort of, I don't know how he learned to read, but he did. And... Um, and so they sort of, they come across this house and they find these, they're always looking for little trinkets, articles of the past that they can archive and, and put their sort of spin on. That's how they're processing their reality. And they come across this sort of hidden room that has a, a diary in it from, you know, a, a, a time gone by when the world was shifting. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm able to read this diary and then uh, Bahia Watson's character finds all these records and they put on a, a record and it's totally degraded and they sort of they're able to pick up little pieces of this Bronski beat song and they sort of they adapt it they they turn it into a you know a day of, of adaptation and and putting a uh, including some of the things that are in the diary into a new take on that song and um, I, I don't know I love the notion that you you can't necessarily take these things with you but they are, they are still meaningful. You can, you can digest them, you can contribute to them and, and leave them and move on. Um, and, and that uh, the arts and creativity has this sort of lasting effect. Uh, it's not something you can eliminate. You can't get rid of the creative spirit. You can't get rid of the, the hope that comes with creativity. Um, so I, I was drawn to the project for a number of reasons, but I think, you know, Igor's script um, was immediately intriguing. He speaks such a visual language. Mm -hmm. um, it, w it felt like an ambitious short, you know? Uh, you don't hear about a lot of shorts that are shot on 16 mil because they're very difficult. It's expensive to process. Uh, it's a challenge, but, um, but I think the scope of it was really what, what drew me to it. Yeah, and you get to incorporate not just your acting skills and music in this one. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, I'm always looking for interesting ways to do that now. I mean, I think for a long time, I wanted to keep my, my acting and my music separate. And now it seems like, you know, there are opportunities that come with, um, you know, uh, being, able to, being able to play in a, musical, in a musical way. And I'm always interested in finding interesting and different ways to do that uh, as they relate to character. Yeah, now I want to ask about the song because I love that song by Bronski Beat. And was that always in the script or did you guys kind of collaborate and decide what song it was going to be? How, how did he even decide what song it was going to be? I, he, all, he had that song in the script. And I think, you know, it's interesting because the song is really about being, being gay in a small town and, yeah. and not um, like having to leave and and this sort of like it's a it's a bit of a protest song or a bit of a survivor song like it has these sort of qualities and you know repurposed in this new world that these characters are living in um they they wouldn't necessarily even be able to hear the lyrics that well they're, they're trying to piece it together and and figure out what it's about and and recontextualize i think that's one of the amazing things about you know certainly the in the folk music tradition it's this like trickle down, you borrow from one thing, you hear something a little different, you change it, but it has some similar, you know, hand-me-down uh, characteristics. So I, I, yeah, we just sort of spent some time with that song with our, our music supervisors and, and the producers and Igor and, and myself and Max and Bahia. And, and we, we had a couple of rehearsals to figure out, okay, how does this work? And what would, when would that come in? And, how, you know, I don't play the violin. So how would, how do you, fake like you can play the violin and um and how would it work on the day of recording it because the vocal was recorded live off the floor but the backing track was going to be coming in later so we, and and being enhanced and so we had i had a little ear pod in my in my ear so i could sort of hear the rhythm and the and the tune but 
you know, just sing along to that. So it was a fun challenge. And any time that you're shooting on 16, you know you have to make it count. So there's a sort of a, a live performance element to it too. Absolutely. Okay, so here's a question for you. Okay, let, let's say it's 30, 40 years in the future. Mm -hmm. And you are in this type of situation. And you could go back and reimagine a song from today. It can't be yours, but tell me a song that you would love to reimagine. From today? Yeah. Or, okay, you know what? We'll open it wider. A so <laughs> any song, any song. That's good Could for me. I'm not, I'm not great with, uh, <laughs> with current, uh, current music. That's okay, my um, friend. I'm not either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it would be cool to do like a... Um, like a Leonard Cohen song or something like, uh, you know, I, I've been listening to a lot of Leonard Cohen recently and something like um, Everybody Knows seems particularly uh, prescient for, for the time we're living in right now. And um, I think it's amazing how sort of, you know, we, we keep circling creatively, we keep circling the same themes, you know, of, of uh, love, betrayal, um, you know, uh, injustice, uh, all of these, the, the major themes keep popping up. So it is, it is an interesting notion to sort of generally, generationally come back to these things and, and some of the things that have been and written and sung about uh, putting, a, putting a spin on it from a different time is always, uh, is always interesting. So I love, I love communing with the, uh, the musicians of my parents' generation and sort of, you know, listening to what they had to say, recognizing what's changed, what's the same, that, that kind of stuff is, uh, is always great creatively. Absolutely. Okay, so this is a great segue into Schitt's Creek because I can't let you go without talking about that show. <laughs> Sorry, just have to do it because it's... Fair enough. Okay, so first off, first off, so you, so you join in season three and, you know, the show was doing okay. You know, people were digging it, but mm, then it hits Netflix and the whole world is just going mental for this show. I mean, honestly. And you got to incorporate, obviously, your music. And that was a good segue because you did simply the best. That kind of turned things around for you. I mean, that episode, even the New York Times went nuts about it. Everybody went crazy about your rendition. Yeah. So my first question is, did Tina Turner ever approach you or did she ever see it? I was always wanting to know that. <laughs> I don't know. I never, uh, I never expected to hear from Tina, and I, and I never did. I wonder if she's heard it. I wonder if she's like, that's not the song that I did. That's, <laughs> I, I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. Cool, because we got to get Tina to see that. Honestly, I, I, I'm actually surprised, and I could actually see her being a big fan of the show too. But you know, <laughs> when when you think about it, no, like when you, you know, that show, like I say, you you look at the accol accolades it had, and people were just in huge depression when it when it finished this. This, this year and um, it, it is amazing to me and I and I'm so proud because yes it's Canadian yes it's all shot here you know it's primarily a Canadian cast and uh, I mean of course you got the great you know Eugene Levy and Catherine O'Hara that's always a bonus and Dan Levy I mean what an amazing cast everybody everybody so good but are you were you kind of you know shocked or surprised at how it took off and how people were feeling about this show yeah, I mean, I, I don't I don't think you ever anticipate that um, that any show. I mean, certainly for me, I, I any any show that I've been on is is never taken off like that. And uh, and I think that you know, with with Schitt's Creek, it was a really sort of a a perfect storm of uh, an incredible cast and a, a brilliant sort of uh, and and strange and unique in a way uh, storytelling style. Um, also the the sort of the hopefulness that it brought to a lot of people in a in a in a dark time especially with um you know the when the presidency uh shifted um it, it, there was a definite feeling in the air i think particularly in the states that you know uh, it, it was just a it was just a shift and i think that people were um were grateful to have some some hopeful, light, um, family-driven, uh, hilarious, acerbic, but also heartfelt content to to rely on and and to check in with, um, and to recognize that it wasn't all dark and doom and destruction. There there is there is love, there is hope, there is laughter. You know that that was a big part of I think the response to the show and. Um, I, I couldn't be more proud to be part of it. Uh, you know, such an incredible group of people and, and, a, and an incredible message, I think, to put out into the world, especially in these times. 
And how did it turn your life around, Noah? Because, you know, people, people loved Patrick. I mean, he was a, he was a very popular character, especially, yeah. you know, I, I mean, I, I can't even imagine, you know, well, we obviously haven't been to the States in a while, you know, but what kind of reaction you get either on social media or whatever, it must be just all love and positive, I would think. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our fans are are the most loving uh, group of people, the most supportive people. They're they're always, you know, championing our our various uh, our our lives and our causes, and and certainly the show. And and you know, I think that uh, the show's done a great job of involving the fans in 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 the sort of in the movement. And you know, to see the show having sort of I don't know, fifteen Emmy nominations this year is is pretty wild. Um, and I don't think that any of that would be happening without the fan response. So, um, so it's amazing, but, uh, you know, personally speaking, it definitely opened up a channel for, to, for me to share my music, yes. um, you know, to, to start a tour and, you know, I started my first time out tour in fe this February, January, February, I don't know. And all of the dates sold out. I didn't know what kind of rooms I'd be playing to. And, and the rooms were full of people who had knew me from the show, but also like knew the lyrics to my songs and stuff, which was crazy, you know, to, to have that kind of love. And every room was just like quiet. People were listening. It was really amazing. So that's, that, that's had the biggest effect on me that, that uh, you know, that, that people are, are listening to music that I'm putting out because they saw me on a TV show. It's, it's crazy to wrap your head around, you know? Well, you know what, you deserve all the success that you're getting. I'm, you know, like I said, been known you for so many years and we're all so proud of you here at home, back at home, of course. And, Thank you, um, and, and just like, first of all, best of luck with everything, but um, my God, like, yes, all those Emmy nominations. I don't, I know they're going to be doing a virtual show but that's got to be real exciting i mean i'm sure i'm getting all dressed up like what what are you planning <laughs> yeah i don't know i'm kind of you know I'll, I'll probably be more dressed up than i am right now for sure i can yeah. guarantee that but at least I, from the I, top up from the top yeah up, exactly sure. yeah, yeah, yeah 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 i think it's kind of you know in the way that uh that the archivist is about sort of bringing the the artifacts the cultural artifacts of the past into the present the beautiful thing about a show like Schitt's Creek is that it, it will continue to be there. You know, people are continuing to discover it every day. And so that's, you know, as sad as we all were to leave it behind, we, we knew that we were leaving behind something that, that was giving something to people. So that's, um, that's a, that's a positive thing at the end of the day. Absolutely. And who knows, there could be a reunion movie or something. We'll, we'll, we'll just keep our fingers crossed for something like that. But like I said, the best to you. So wonderful to always talk to you. Noah. I really appreciate your time. Best of luck with this short. I love it. And I love that Connor Jessup was uh, also involved as a producer. That's cool. Yeah. 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 A, a brilliant, a brilliant producer and a brilliant actor. I mean, what a, what a creative genius that guy is. Yeah. So, he's amazing yeah. too. But well, the whole scene was, was incredible. Ashley Shields and, yeah. and all of our music, uh, supervisors and the the whole crew was crazy cool. It was a, it was a really unique short to get to work on, and it, I appreciate that a short when a short treats itself like a feature. I think that you know you you've got a good recipe there. Absolutely. Well, I'll let you go, but thank you so much for your time. I appreciate right it so so much, and uh, just fingers crossed, we'll be watching you guys at the Emmys. Uh, congratulations on everything. Thank you so much. Okay, Bonnie. take care, Bye. Noah. Have a great weekend. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, you too. Bye.